All right, this is Rudy. There's a 10 minute recess, so I don't have long to get out the update. I had to run down to the parking lot, which is two blocks down. And I want to get back to the uh, courtroom. Praise God for Wally Drake. Uh, he's allowed me to be a court reporter for him. The uh, Congressional Prayer Conference Radio and Television Network. So praise God for him, and that did work. They didn't let me start taking notes until, uh, I would say 10 minutes to until 10. So the first two hours, I was not able to take notes. And you guys can tell I'm out of shape because I'm breathing hard. But when you only get 10 minutes and you gotta go through the TSA, and you gotta get back up to the fifth floor and your truck's two miles away with your phone, uh, you do what you can. Another brother is uh, coming up. Hey brother, let's stand on the other, oh, did you want to participate? Oh no. Okay, uh, all right, no problem. So I wanted to get the update. So, uh, Judge Margaret Casey Rogers gave the jury instructions, uh, and she covered like a written piece of paper, and unless you had the written piece of paper, you couldn't actually follow what the instructions were. So the defense and the prosecutor uh, talked about the potential jury instructions. Judge Margaret Casey Rogers did say that all the jurors will stay in for lunch. So the government is buying their lunch, which I consider a, an act of bribery. And they're trying to do that to keep them from walking outside and seeing the signs. Tiffany Hope Eggers brought up the subject of jury nullification. And she brought up a specific phone call that Ken Hoven had with my wife and myself, where I was reading the Void Dyer questions, which is some sort of legal term for the questions that are expected to be asked of the juror, jurors at the beginning of the trial. And Tiffany Hope Eggers put forth that that's evidence of Ken Hovind's conscience of guilt. But I would say you can believe in jury nullification that the law is bad whether you're guilty or not. So I don't agree with her argument. The first guy on the testimony was uh, Stan was Charles or Chuck Evans. I can't remember which, but it was IRS Special Agent Chuck Evans. The next one was Scott Snyder, and Scott Snyder did a reading exercise for everybody. He read Paul Hansen's letters that Paul Hansen declaring to be a free free inhabitant of the land uh, that he's a creator created by God which they seem to be upset by Tiffany was objecting left and right she's a uh, very boisterous in her objections whereas the defense counsel hardly objects at all nobody's allowed to sit on the front rows in the audience so they don't they don't allow any people to sit on the front row and when new people come in they always sit on the front row and then someone has to come up and ask them to leave they talked about a subpoena ducus tecum, like I even know what that is. Uh, Scott Snyder said he's an IRS agent for 20 years, and he's very proud of his uh, job and his performance and his work as an IRS agent for the past 20 years. They read some letters by, Scott Snyder read some letters by Ken Hoven, where Ken Hoven claimed to be created by God, and Kent claimed to have an unalienable rights that come from God, and a free inhabitant of the land. It's incredible that Scott Snyder gets so much time on the witness stand. I hope they let Ken Hoven get that much time. Ken, uh, Special Agent Scott Snyder said that he's never had someone, fa uh, f never experienced anyone failure to appear after uh, uh, after receiving a grand jury subpoena. He said that he has heard of other people that have used the argument, "You must prove I am a U.S. citizen," but Scott Snyder says that that's a frivolous argument. So they're already trying to shoot down the jurisdiction issues. The prosecution didn't rested. Chris Klotz stood up and said something about prima facie. I, I couldn't get, get it, but he did bring up the topic of prima facie. Thomas S. Keith, which is Ken Hovind's attorney, said that he moved to acquit on all counts. He says there has to be an agreement, a meeting of the minds between Paul Hansen and Ken Hovind in order to commit f mail fraud or fraud by mail. The key evidence was that Hovind was not participating in Hansen's filing of a quiet title. I'm not sure what quiet title is, but maybe you guys know. And he was saying there was no agreement of the minds. There was no meeting of the minds to commit any fraud, much less through the mail. Of course, the judge, I don't think, was going to dismiss anything, but that, uh, Ken Hovind's attorney did move that she dismiss all counts. There was mention that Hansen was acting as a trustee. There was, uh, I remember hearing, I can't remember if I read this outside of court, but that Ken, Ken Hovind is being charged with criminal contempt of court. That, that's something that not, must be done in court. Ken Hoven didn't... He, the charges that Ken Hoven is being charged with was not committed in court. 
Okay, and there must be a conspiracy to defraud the government. There's been no proof of any of that. It's just a snow job of reading documents. Uh, there was also discussion about Ken Hovind that he may put forth the argument that he was not aware of the order, but the judge has already tried to shoot that down multiple times by stating that ignorance of the law is no excuse for the law. So you guys need to understand that Ken Hovind's been in prison. His mind has been challenged with like, you know, just trying to exist in that hellhole. And then some judge, that, that evil, wicked judge, issues this criminal, she issues this order about the land or the property, and then Ken Hovind gets charged with criminal contempt of uh, court for an order that he didn't even know about, you know, or at least he may put forth the argument he didn't know about it, and they're saying that ignorance is no excuse for the law. So a judge somewhere can say, don't go, uh, you know, don't go walk uh, backwards down the sidewalk. And then if you happen to walk backwards down the sidewalk, you're all of a sudden in criminal contempt of a court because you didn't follow the judge's orders, and the judge can give you unlimited time in jail for that. It's not even 20 years. It's unlimited, is my understanding. The, there are all kinds of arguments being put forth about the Liz pendants and the payments and discussions between Ken Hovind and Eric and Eric and Hanson. And I can tell you from experience that when you're on these phone calls with Ken Hovind, he says a lot of things that, that he don't have vis full visibility into what's going on in the outside world. It's very hard for Ken Hovind to... He don't know what's on 2 Peter 3. He's never seen it. He don't know what's on free Ken Hovind. He's never seen it. He may say something to Eric Hovind. It may or may not get done. He may say something to me. It may or may not get done. Ken Hovind may say something to my wife, and it may or may not get done. Ken Hovind, Ken, you can't call Ken Hovind and have any discussions with him. He has to call you, and you better drop everything and pick up that phone if you want to talk to him. You know what I mean? Because you don't know if he's going to be able to call back. And not only that, he's got people behind him that are standing to wait to use the phone, and if they complain, they throw Kent Hovind in a hellhole in, in isolation. Okay, one, one last thing, guys. I need to shut this down and get it uploaded and get back in court. Alan Hoyle is sick. That's the guy that we uh, interviewed yesterday. We came that Alan Hoyle is standing outside with signs. He's been a trooper. He's been here the whole time standing outside the courtroom. Satan has come against him, and he's sick. Uh, Gerald, me, and another brother laid hands on him. We anointed him with all oil. We claimed, we claimed healing on God's word where the elder should anoint a brother with oil who's sick and that he will be healed. So pray for Alan Hoyle. Claim victory that Alan Hoyle will be healed. And uh, there was discussion about criminal contempt of court versus obstruction. And uh, the judge told uh, Kent's attorney that it's too late in the game to bring that up. That's all I got. I got to get back in the court. I don't want to miss anything.